Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in today's episode we will be continuing our series on summer blooming plants and I hope you're enjoying this series that showcases some of the most scintillatingly beautiful floral exuberance. At the outset, let me dedicate this video to all the mothers of the world who have sown and will sow the seeds of gardening in their children, thereby making this world a much more greener, beautiful place to live in. So in this episode, we will be talking about the tuberose or famously called the Rajni Gandha in India. So this is scientifically called the Polyanthus tuberosa and is related surprisingly to the agave family. Polyanthus means many flowers in Greek. So as you can see this bears beautiful fragrant clusters of white flowers at the terminal points of this flower spike. Which makes this the most sought after flower in bouquets and other floral arrangements. The flowers are an integral part in many religions in India and also in some Eastern cultures. The two major varieties of tuberose is the single and the double flowered varieties. The single is more fragrant than the double. This is a native of Mexico, hence it thrives well in hot tropical countries. This can be grown in containers in frost affected areas and the bulbs must be sown in these areas during early spring when the danger of frost is reduced so as to enjoy the blooms during the summer. In tropical areas, the bulb can be sown anytime, but this plant needs long days of sunlight for it to produce big blooms. So for those who live in tropical zones, sow the bulb somewhere around January or December end to enjoy your blooms in April or May. The bulb is spindle-like and forms a lot of bulbits which can be separated to grow new plants. The lower flowers bloom first and as the lower blooms dry, the flowers above start to bloom. This blooms throughout the day and night but the fragrance in the bloom increases during the night and mind you, this is the most beautiful fragrance that is almost a mix of honey, jasmine and gardenia all in one. The fragrance can spread through a large area of the garden. The fragrance and the radiating white color of the flowers is to attract moths and other nocturnal pollinators. The fragrance is also tapped to make perfumes and essential oils. The spikes of this plant is more sturdy than the other bulb flowers like gladiolus or amaryllis. Now let us talk about the conditions this plant thrives in. It needs full sun to perform the best, giving you more flower spikes. If this is grown in shade, then you would get to enjoy only the grass-like leaves which on its own looks not all that bad. Now let's look at watering. Water consistently during the summer months when it is growing rapidly and reduce watering during the winter months. During winter, water only when the soil dries because the plant does not like water stagnation one bit. Fertilizing this plant is very easy. Just add lots of compost or organic matter and you can see this bloom profusely. So apparently, my tuberose plant had not given flowers at all for almost three long years. The only thing I did was I persevered and added a lot of homemade compost, vegetable waste and fruit wastes like banana peels almost every month throughout the year and I'm astounded to find these beautiful flowers this year. The icing on the cake is that there is not only one but two flower spikes. Soil mix for the tuberose must be well draining, so a healthy mix of 50% compost, 30% sand and 20% garden soil would be ideal. Sow the bulbs at least 3 to 7 cm deep and do not crowd the bulbs if you are growing this in a container. In the ground, give it a spacing of 20 cm at least. Avoid using a lot of garden soil or clay soil that retains water in the soil mix to avoid fungal diseases in the plant. This can be propagated with the help of dividing the bulbs majorly and sometimes it is also grown through seeds. But I have rarely seen seeds on this plant, maybe someday it would produce them. Do not prune the leaves or the spikes after the plant is done blooming. Let it die out naturally and feed the bulbs for another great show the next year. 
Pests and diseases are quite rare, however, if you don't take care of the above needs properly, then it can be attacked by thrips, aphids, mealybugs, etc. This is an excellent plan for night gardens where the moonlight illuminates the rubbery white petals of this flower which makes it look like a bejeweled lightning strike that will blow your mind. With this, we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore. And if you like this video, then please like, share and subscribe. Also, follow me on Instagram and Facebook for further updates. Thank you for watching Urbanscape Bangalore and until we meet again, goodbye.